you guys always send me the links to listen to to watch all like that but before we touch on that let's touch on you you just mentioned something about brokering and and arguing and trying to negotiate with these brokers man where are you and what and what's the lows that you was looking at what was the conversation like and what low did you end up going with going where to Finally, you know, going up to uh, Pennsylvania, two stops, Pennsylvania and New Jersey, Fine. North Carolina. It actually, they wanted, they were trying to get me to go take a load out of Washington, and they even tried one for Kansas Fine. and one for Iowa, but those two, they couldn't, somebody I get undercut. So I ended up sticking with the one going up to Jersey, you know, Pennsylvania, two stops. But it wasn't worth it going out. The people were trying to all be spending four thousand dollars to go way out there. And I don't even run my truck fast to crack. That's it. I got a block UGR, I just delete it. I don't I stay from off the west coast. Even though I'm originally from my dad's way, I don't care to go out there unless I'm on an airplane. Right. Yeah, they they really, you know, the many people under who's not really offering nothing, yeah, right. and it leaves you no choice but to just really take what you can. I'm like where it's fine and over. And um to go to the West Coast, these people are nuts. Four thousand, eight thousand, thirty-five hundred. I'm like, are you serious? I, I can make the same thing going to multiple stops on the East Coast and not have to run that within a five hundred miles. You know, that's it. That's basically the lows that I'm on now. It's like a five hundred some mile load coming from out of Hickory, around Hickory, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, New Jersey. And I find something there and try to get back to the Midwest. Yeah, plus I just came out the shop. I got to get a fire department to speak to my air, my air conditioner. Then something like cold, get power without getting cold enough. Fine. They cold it in and got to get tail light. I got to get two tail lights. They go on out and get water in there. So yeah, every day mess with all the operators. When they come in, the quick as they go out. Meanwhile, you got smokers, dispatchers. You got the flip flops out there undercutting everything. And if you say you'll take it for 2000 they say they'll take it for 900 with no problem. I, I've been watching my man on TikTok. You know, I've been posting a lot of his uh, screenshots into the community posts, and I leave it up to the community to look at what they got to offer and to see if, if you guys would to book those type of loads. The last one that I posted was like a team load. They they requiring two drivers and only offering like twelve hundred, fifteen hundred dollars. The operating costs and the fuel and the profit between two drivers is gonna be somewhere around 100, $150. How do you guys negotiate more from the brokers when the brokers is not budging off of what they bringing out? And how long do you think before the low ages, before the brokers turn around and be like, okay, well, yeah, maybe we gotta let this low go for about Four thousand dollars. They would probably sit on that load for a week of time, and then they gotta go ahead and get off. They usually have some knucklehead that'll come behind everybody and be like, "Don't worry, I I'll do it for nine hundred So it's sad because that that messes up everything. So you got guys that coming behind people, the bulk is already cutting in there. Then you got these other dudes offering to take it for cheap. And it's crazy, and I don't understand it. I had talked to one brother that was from overseas. He's been over here for years now. He was getting on his relatives about that because they're coming over here thinking that ain't it's big money. You know, we can send this home, we can keep this. Most of them just take care of the woman back home. And um, he realized when he first came here after a while, that like, yo, I can't live off. If they seem all good at first, then he, he got on the ball. So, yeah, it's, it's sad. I mean, the way they have to sit on them loads, Fine. some of them will budge. They go ahead and say, you know what, I got to get off of it. Let me go ahead and take whoever want to take it. And, you know, they're not going to take them cut. Fine. But a lot of them, they like, oh, well, fuck it. You know, I just got my share off. I, I'm going to give it to whoever going to take it because I had it too long. I just need to get rid of it and get a new one. It, it, it's crazy, man. I mean, but the team loads, I didn't have a couple of them. And I tricked them. And they said, oh, it needs to be there tomorrow. It needs to be there tomorrow. All right, I got you. Come on, come, man, I'm so much. They phone up the phone. I tell them they're going to get there. And then I had to break the both of one time. They told me, don't tell the uh, shipper that you're not a team driver. I said, okay. So when he called me looking for the load to be there that morning, I was at a rest area suite. I was going to go get me something to eat, brush me, wash me, get the road. And uh, he said, well, you need to be there because we can't be doing this. I said, no, you ain't supposed to be doing this. And when I get to that receiver, I tell him I want to see drive. No, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. Please don't do that. I get with these people. I don't want these people to cut me off. I said, I know this way. Yeah, they, they dirty there. They dirty. So I, I advise everybody, especially if you're a solo driver, team loads. And if you're not a solo driver, yeah, stand on ground. Don't take no cheap team loads. Let it trust me.
they save your time. You'll find some. Yeah, if you're a solo driver, take the team low. And then when they start breaking, someone always got to be there by the far. No, I'm going to tell the receiver I'm not a team driver. That's why I got here late. Yeah, that right there, you that in the bud. I found that out real quick. They don't want the people to send them off. Yeah, it's sad. So the way the pecking order works is that the shippers will look for a broker or a brokerage. The shipper will negotiate the amount with them. And then once the deal goes through, then the broker is the one that's connected to you guys. And then whatever whatever the amount that the broker takes out of it, it will be the amount left over that's supposed to go to you guys, right? Yeah, sometimes, sometimes they just, you know, they look too greedy. Especially when you got some of these new books, somebody to put them in the business. They only thing is scout. Like, yo, I've seen how much my boy made or my old girl made last week. They made over 15000 within two days. So they going to come in there and try to do the same thing. That's why I don't know why the fellow motor carriers, they, they supposed to be coming up with something. But they need to tighten up. They need to buckle down because it's, it's getting out of hand. It's like, you know, you allow these people to basically steal from the job. And you know this ain't the going right. Then they, they use this economy. If all the economy's not doing too good, yeah, you're doing good. You're doing great. Low baby paying five grand, you only offered eleven hundred. Yeah, you're doing real good. But that the economy sometimes you know, I look at it like it's just the book. They agree, you know, truckers can't come to an agreement and everybody say, you know what? Hey man, stop moving for a couple of days. Shut it down. Everybody shut it down. Don't nobody budge. But we got an issue that it get the way the big carriers, you know, they'll threaten their driver, they'll fire them, you know, all this stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's bad. It's bad. All right, bro. So switching gears, man, we we got this uh, topic of a driver that pretty much snitched on another driver that was at the Love's truck stop. Shout out to the mother trucker. I'm not going to play his monologue on the, on the letter or email that he got from that said driver. Uh, if you guys want to listen to that part, y'all can definitely go over there to his channel and peep it out. But the name of the, the title of the, uh, the video is Truck Driver Calls Police and FMCSA on Truck Driver for Smoke Weed Every Day. He was talking about in his video commentary that the person that sent him the email and the audio for the phone call that we're going to listen to in a minute. He wants to keep that person anonymous. I always already came across a whole bunch of truck drivers that feel some kind of way of other truckers knocking them out or snitching them out and all like that. Some say that that driver should mind his business. Others say, hey, that was a good idea and I'm glad. But in this situation, this was at a Love's truck stop. It was, they was parked for the night. And in the email, the, the young man said that the driver next to him was in his truck and he can smell Smoke weed every day. illuminating from his truck. Now, I'm not sure how is that possible, okay? It, it could be possible because we smoke is strong. But suppose it could have been CBD. And CBD is I have the same smell as weed. Or what about what about hookah? They they could be hookering, hockering, whatever you call that. Maybe they was vaping. Maybe it was some strong vape. But this driver took it upon himself to instead of going into the truck stop and let them know, or instead of moving, maybe he decides. To pick up the phone and make the call. Let's check it out. Hold on. Before we get into it, give me a second to say at one point of the video, Mother Trucker says that, you know, he's thinking and listening and thinking that the truck driver is doing this on the side of safety. I want to say this, maybe, but the driver in question and the driver that made the call, they was both parked at a truck stop for the night so what part of safety is this is 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 this going bruh like i can understand if you happen to be driving and you drive up on the side of the truck driver and you see him actually smoking that joint or 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 just if you see him with your own eyes 
on the road doing it, then yes, I could say that that might be a safety concern, right? Would you agree? I mean, I mind my business. I've been to the penitentiary, so I'm minding your business to get you caught up in something you don't need to be caught up in. So I see all kind of stuff out here. Me personally, I don't sound like all will see it. Because we just we get so, caught. We will get caught. Yeah, don't get away with it. Yeah, I, I'm not going to. I just do it. Like I said, I just do it a lot. I don't. I have too. But maybe from a safety point of view of this anonymous driver that made the call. Yeah, may, maybe if you would have saw him with your own eyes and you you see him driving and you made the call. Yeah, yeah, I, I can see that on the safety. But this driver, number one, did not see him. He just assumed that the smoke or the smell was illuminating from the truck. You didn't see him smoke. And I'm going to say this from a comment point of view. One of the commenters said that a whole man in a truck with his girl or wife is worried about a whole man in another truck that don't have nothing to do with you. That's For real. Hey, that's real. He, his wife should have G-checked him and said, man, mind your business. Like, literally, like, hey, ain't nobody. He got to think about it. I'm sure he probably drinking some beer or something. He ain't got no business. He wouldn't want nobody to rank him out walking his truck. You know, who to say somebody called the police on him and his wife? They loud over there. They having sex. Someone, someone comes to what's going on in there. He might be killing them. Like, he wouldn't want nobody to do that. So, yeah, he's most different upbringing. Some people got different upbringing. So, I was waiting. Hey, man, you don't see that. You don't see that. That's just, they, they problem. You don't want to involve yourself in it because you never know. You might drive yourself into something that you can't get out of. You should have never been in it. Someone else. Yeah, that was wrong on his part. No more wasting time. Let's get it. Hold on. Where is your emergency? Uh, you know, it's not actual emergency. I'm a commercial truck driver, and I'm at the love here. And there's a truck next to me. I, I'm sitting here in my sleeper, and I can smell marijuana. And really, really strong. And I open up my, my door, and there's a tractor here next to me. Um, and it, there's a guy sitting in the seat, his window is down, and it completely smells like it's coming from his truck. Let me, let me transfer over to the police so you can give them the information. Okay. I'm going to the one that's going to handle that area, okay? Okay, thank you. Uh, oh. Uh, yes, um, I'm a commercial truck driver and I am in the parking lot of Lugs and there is a tractor that's next to us and there's a guy sitting in, well I'm sitting in the back of my, in the back of my sleeper and I'm smelling marijuana. I roll down my window, or open my door and there's a guy that's sitting in his seat his window is down and it smells like the weed is coming from his truck. Okay. All right, I will let her patrols down and have them check it out. Yo, you need to stop snitching, granddad. Ow! Hey, won't you? There you have it. A whole 911 call to the state police on a truck driver that's minding his own business, not bothering nobody by the sounds of it. And uh, you decided to, you know, just because you smell smoke weed every day from his truck, maybe it wasn't important for the state police to come out. Like literally, you guys is at the Love's truck stop. What you gonna, what you gonna do? You gonna actually, when the state police get there, you gonna step out with your S on your chest and be like, yes, I was the one that called you, officer. It's this truck right here. Let me explain something to you, bro. This trucking is a small world. Like you, you messing somebody's livelihood up on something that you assume of what's going on inside of his truck that didn't have nothing to do with you. Again, why you just didn't go and, and just go inside of the store and let the store handle it? Why you just didn't do that? Depending on where you was at, if you was in the back with your wife or girlfriend, how in the hell are you, unless your windows is open? Maybe, maybe your windows was open. Maybe you could have just shut the window. But you actually, but hold on, hold on. He actually, he actually got up, 
went up to the front seat to open up his door. So you sitting in the front seat on the phone with 5-0, eyeballing the other guy. And you still didn't say whether or not he was actually smoking. You just say he was up in his front seat and, uh, and it was emanating from his truck. And then on top of that, what would have been the outcome? Like what you was expecting the state police to do? Depending on where they at, hold that dog. Depending on where they at, weed is legal. Whether you, we know it's not legal for us to smoke, but it's probably might be legal in that state to smoke. So why are they gonna bother to come out to check on the driver because you complain that you smelling weed smoke in the truck? You called 911 too, bro. An emergency line that wasn't even an emergency. You could have called the regular number. That's crazy. What's your thoughts on all of that, man? We're in the generation, I think, in the era, the okay. decade of you know, restriction is at an all-time high. It's, it's ridiculous. I mean, okay. That right there, that was none of his business. The mother trucking and even be posting stuff like this. I okay. wouldn't even wasted my time doing the video on that. I would have told that guy, hey, you go find some mustard, you know, you post it on your own channel or your own time. But I don't, I'm not here to be a rat. I'm here to support you. You know, I'm here to talk about current events and what's going on in the industry. Well, the trucker was dead wrong for even posting that video. At that point, it's like, you can do rant and school you know? Don't nobody can do that, even the cops. I done been in the penitentiary and anybody that's been in prison or that grew up in the neighborhoods where you go run to the police, the police might run and tell you exactly who's on in your face. You know, prove to you that you're not, if you that much of a fan, why don't you go personally bring that problem to them? But you and your kids, Y'all at a truck stop. This guy parked next to you. He's smoking, he's drinking, he's partying in the truck, prostitutes over there, whatever. And hey, mind your business. Close your curtains and go lay your ass. You know, it's got a woman in there. Do your thing. So and it's sad that Mother Trucker even posted it. Because he, 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 that right there is controversy. That right there is drama. That's some drama queen stuff. He shouldn't even post it. I wouldn't even. I'd have told that dude, man, yeah, no thanks, my man. You know, you can find someone else and post it on your own channel, but we're not here for that. That driver gets caught up on a random and something happened with him, you know, eventually to catch up to him, but we, we're not here to enforce a lot. We don't drive trucks. We don't have badges in control cars. If he would have been real, you know, upset, that guy would have got out of his truck and jumped on him when the police got there. The police would, of course, you know, broke it up, but at the end of the day, you must believe, from what I understand, it was in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania weed is legal, like Massachusetts and all that they got to get through. So the cops probably, you know, they end up knowing it's, it's cold. The people are cold like the weather. The cops probably would have let them smack them over, yank them off. Of. It's like, yo, man, you that man want to smoke crack in his truck. Got him smoke crack. He is just going to catch up with him. Can't run home. A lot of drivers need to understand that after November, they smoke. coming up with this law. That program not going to say, they taking your life. Point oh. blank. They degrade it, downgrade it, bringing it back down to a regular driver. So I advise a lot of drivers put their weed down, man, no matter how much dispensaries, how legal it is. Until they come up with something that say we can do it, fine. Oh. Until then, it ain't working. It ain't working loudly. As you can see, you got suckers like that sitting around not minding their business. He oh. need to be back there scoring his life, but he's up there being parking lot security. He's the yard father. He's guarding the yard. Like, yeah. Crazy. Mother Trucker, he says that he's for the drivers, and if the drivers reach out to him, he he has he has an obligation to share what the drivers want to share, and he felt that that was a safety issue. You you heard him; he said it. I didn't I didn't play it. You guys can go over there and listen to his commentary on it, but. He said that from a safety point of view, he felt that the truck driver did right. I think I would have been the one if if I would have found the audio, if I would have found the audio on, on TikTok or on YouTube, then yeah, I think I would have been the one to actually bring that out and, and would have gave the drivers or the community an op opportunity to share their thoughts on it. Just like I found the female truck driver years ago where she made a TikTok. Now she made an individual TikTok. Like you said, she made a TikTok on her page. She posted it on her page. She didn't send it to me or anybody else. She made it on her page. I found it and that's when I shared it. 
where she was standing behind a driver that was buying beer. She took it upon herself to go outside, find the truck driver's company name and phone number, called up HR and claimed to have him fired. That's crazy. Oh, and that, crazy. That, that video right there garnered over damn near 100, 100K views and a lot of comments. So if I would have found the audio, I would have probably shared the audio. But Mother Trucker brought it out because somebody asked him to bring it out. And keeping that driver anonymous, I wouldn't have made it a personal request of a of of a driver snitching on another driver. Yeah, that ain't that ain't cool. And I, I agree on everything that you said. But again, if you guys want to hear his commentary on it, yeah, definitely go over there to his channel and 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 peep it out. I just I, I just wanted I just want you guys opinion on the call itself. Because there are there are abundance of, of truck drivers that just want to see another truck driver fail, man, and mess with his money. That's why a lot of truck drivers got ran off of because of people calling their companies, complaining about something that they heard, something that they saw, something that they didn't like about that driver. But here's a question that was presented to me in an email though. It reads, do companies really watch their drivers social media before i get your answer on it before we get out of here i'm going to say yeah they do they do some companies require you to let them know that you even have a social media outlet a facebook but they definitely are interested in if you have a TikTok or if you have a youtube do they watch it yeah yeah if you drive for a company like a mega carrier or something like that, somebody in that company is going to come across your video, especially if you're on TikTok. Your video will come across the For You page. They see that you over here down talking to company or doing some crazy ass shit. You can best believe that that video is going to get sent to, to corporate or to the office or to the F HR manager or the safety director, especially if you're doing something crazy like showing yourself driving and you doing a live feed at the same time and you supposed to be driving but you're concentrating on the comment session and and talking to the people in the comments now i want to honestly say that i haven't seen that as much anymore on tiktok like i used to like a couple of like a year ago it was heavy everybody in their mama was doing it but this year i haven't seen much of it but yeah yeah companies like mega carriers and maybe some small mom and pop companies but definitely the mega carriers yeah they, they they see your social media they see it and if you do something crazy or talk crazy or say something crazy you can best believe you're going to be called in that office you can best believe the conversation is going to be like well we're going to have to let you go because of, of a company morals or whatever fine print policy that they got in the handbook that you missed so yeah be careful what you're doing and be careful what you're saying on social media because it, it it will come back to bite you in the behind what's your final thoughts about that man do you think companies watch your watch your social media like TikTok and 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 youtube and stuff like that yeah if you are um you know if you're on the social media networking and you are in uh um, what were they calling uh uh, I forget the name they call for, but basically, if you're doing that, you gotta be mindful of what you're doing. You drive, you drive with somebody else, so you represent the company as well as yourself. You ain't got to go on no bull crap. But they, they watching on social media. You and they, they got every right to watch. Uh, they want to know what you doing. Are you down in the company? You're talking recklessly, you know, harassing people, making content that that uh, they, they out here. Now, if you own your own short, you just own. You do what you want to do. But really, yeah, you just you, you have to be mindful of what you're saying. You're doing on social media. Some people get mad at the company when you fire them and let them go. Um, but it's like oh, for you in their truck, you representing yourself, not only yourself. You represent them as a company because when people see that, they gonna say, "Hey, man, it's you drive for them." They hire people like that over there, really. And most people that own the company. They, not, they don't want their name or their reputation on it. Especially these mega carriers. They don't play around. That's why most people I see that make videos from mega carriers, they try to be positive. Some of them don't even want to show who they work for because they know people will do some dirty stuff and call in on them, just, you know, make up stuff and get them messed up. But, um, 
Yeah, you're definitely a content creator. Yeah, then you on social media, you're coffee shop, you very fine. What you on social media? But you not only represent yourself and your content, your, your channel, but you also represent that company. You are, yeah, I, I, it is what it is. I mean, I, it's common sense. Hurt stuff we all put on social media. We all know what I did. They didn't just screw they sell. They didn't been a hundred different companies, hundred different shorts. <laughs> oh, nobody want to mess with them because of the stuff they be doing on their channel. They think nothing's wrong with them. I'm like, yo, it's so all the truck. I wouldn't be posting certain stuff. All the truck, like me, I own my truck. I could post videos and upload stuff. But what? I'm not a content creator and I'm not going to be out there trying to make people think that the truck is a clubhouse. We party in here, get prostituted here and all. It's like, nah, I'm out here at work. They can get them. Like you say, a lot of them got ran off the social media because of it. Some of the people, they literally, they don't respect the most people that they're dealing with. And then it gets real bad reviews when they come because of that one drop. Yeah, gotta be mindful of it, man. Gotta be mindful of it.